Hello, everyone. My name is Austin Ouma, and today I'm going to take you through the process of um, copying large data farm files or any file for that matter to OCI using uh, OCI CLI uh, multi part uploads. Um, so, OCI basically means uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, where we'll be uh, copying our files, and CLI is the command line interface. So for this exercise, um, we are going to be using my local machine, my laptop, where I have a sample file that I will be uploading onto OCI. And this is actually a dump file that could be used uh, to, you know, uh, import into a database on OCI. Um, so without further ado, uh, let me quickly get into the demo bit of it. Okay, so the first thing that I would like to show you here is um, if you look at uh, my console here, you can see my console, I already have created a bucket. Um, the name of this bucket is bucket TDB. And this is the bucket where we will be importing some files into from my local machine. Um, as you can see, the bucket is actually empty, no object here yet. Um, what I'd like to draw your attention towards is the namespace in which this data pump exists because we are going to be using this much later on. Okay, so there we go. So on my local machine where I have my uh, files, I've opened uh, PowerShell. So this is PowerShell. And the first thing you need to do is to install CLI onto your machine. If you don't know how to do that, then uh, there is a guide here. If you can look at this quick start guide, uh, by Oracle, it will give you, um, you know, instructions on how to install CLI onto your machines. Could be very diverse uh, operating systems, Linux 9, 8, 7, Mac OS, Windows, Linux, and Unix, or any other environment that you'd have in there. So if you've not yet installed CLI, I urge you to have a look at this uh, page uh, and uh, pick your relevant environment and use that to actually uh, install CLI. So in my case here, I've already installed CLI. And if you want to check if CLI has been con uh, installed correctly, all you need to do is to just execute that. So it will just tell me uh, the version of OCI uh, CLI that I have available here. As you can see, this is what I have, 3.25.3, which basically confirms that I already have CLI installed, okay? Um, the next thing that we want to do is after confirming that uh, CLI has actually been installed is to configure or set up my configuration file, okay? This is actually the file that will tell uh, CLI on my laptop which environment to connect to on OCI. So there are certain parameters that it will be asking for, okay? So what I need to do is to just execute this command. Um, sorry. Uh, what I need to do is to just execute um, this command. Just give me one second. Um, there we go. And uh, so the command is OCI setup config. Okay, that will set up the command, uh, the config file. And it will be asking us a few things. Okay, so the first thing that it asks you is where do you want to store your config file? Um, so this is the default. Uh, I will leave it as the default. You can pick any location if you so wish to change that. Okay. Um, because in my environment, I've already installed this and I've already created a config file, it will ask me if I want to, you know, override this file. In your case, if you've not done this, you will not need to do this uh, overwriting. So in my case here, I will just go ahead and say, um, um, I will overwrite this, okay? And then uh, it will ask me if I want to overwrite the config file itself and I actually say yes. Okay, so the first thing that it asks me here, uh, remember I mentioned it will be asking me for certain parameters of uh, how to actually connect to my OCI uh, tenancy is to give in, um, is to um, offer the user ID. So this is the user who will actually be performing the multi-part upload. For me to get this user ID, let me just go back to my prompt here, my console, I click on my uh, user profile here. And uh, this is where I'll be able to get my user um, OSID. So I can just show this. This is the OSID that is needed. I copy that and actually paste that back onto my config environment. The next thing it asks for is the tenancy OID, OSID. Uh, I get that by clicking on that and clicking on the tenancy 
And uh, this is where just like the user OSID, I will also be able to get my tenancy OSID. Okay, so I will just show this here, copy and uh, paste that there. Okay. And then it will ask me in which region is my tenancy or where do I want or where is my bucket and, uh, you know, uh, in which region uh, it lies. Uh, so you can see that I have that here. You can quickly see that here. Um, you can see this is the region that I'm operating in. So you can use that uh, URL to identify the region that you're operating in. And so we can see that this is EU Frankfurt 1. Um, so I look for EU Frankfurt 1 here, and uh, where is it? Yes, here. So you can see EU Frankfurt 1 is here, and the number to denote that is 23. So what I do here is to just click and add uh, 23. Okay, then it asks me if I want to uh, generate a key pair. Okay, of course I want to do that. Okay, so I say yes. And it asks me where I want the key pairs to be. I will leave that as the default. It asks me for the name of the key. I will leave that as the default uh, because I've already created this before. It's asking me if I need to overwrite. So I will just say yes. And then it asks me for a passphrase. You can choose to have a passphrase or not. In this case, I will have a passphrase. So I enter my passphrase here and I confirm the passphrase. And then it will ask me to overwrite the other file, um, you know, the pub, uh, private key. And I say yes. Um, and then um, it asks me if I want to write my passphrase onto the config file, or if not, uh, I will be prompted every time to enter my passphrase. So in this case, I decide to say uh, yes, so that it is written to my config file. That's it. That's it. We've basically set up a CLI to connect to my OCI tenancy and uh, where my bucket is, uh, the region that is. The next thing that I need to do is to actually configure or upload that key onto uh, OCI. So I need you to take a note of this fingerprint. This is something that we are also going to be uh, confirming once we've uploaded our key. So the fingerprint needs to be the same. So for me to do that, let me go back to my um, uh, console and then I click on my user here. Okay, and then what I want to do is to go down here to my API keys. Um, I cannot have more than three keys. So let me just delete a couple here just uh, for me to make space for uh, the key that we want to upload. Okay, and then uh, I just click on add API key and I click on paste public key. Remember we did already generated the keys in my local machine. Okay, so we need to paste the public key here. So what do I do? I go to that region where I had stored my keys. Let me just refresh this. Okay, I think that's right. And this is my public key, okay? So I can either just uh, copy this and paste it there, or I could just, uh, for example, open this key. Um, you can see that here. And I can copy the entire key from that face, uh, from begin uh, public key to end public key, um, and then copy this and paste it uh, onto my console, okay? So there we go. Um, then I just click on add. Oh, wait, uh, we seem to have a problem somewhere here. Uh, so let me just delete uh, some keys here again. Let me just delete this. Okay. Uh, let me, yes. So we finally have our key here. Um, please take a note of this. Um, you can see that, uh, the fingerprint that I have here, ending FC E1, E1 FC. If you go back to my console here, you can see that the fingerprints is basically the same, which means that I've uploaded uh, the keys correctly. So this is what you need to confirm. Okay, with that done, uh, we've basically finished uh, the setup of uh, CLI, OCI, and then uh, all we now need to do is to now start uh, copying our files, okay? Now, uh, before I do that, let me just go back to my packet. Okay, um, so I can click on storage here and then I go to buckets and then um, I go to where my bucket is. Remember I'd shown you the, 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 
the namespace. So this is my bucket called bucket TDB. This is where we'll be um, uploading some files. So again, take note of the uh, namespace that we have here. Um, so you can actually use the console to upload a file from wherever it is onto object storage. So you can just click on upload here, select file. And uh, if this is your local machine, you can just use your Windows tools to select whatever file it is. So for example, here I am picking, this is a very large file, um, at least so. This is a five uh, GB file. So I can just click on open here and immediately just click on upload and it will start uploading. However, this is not best practice for very large files. And by large files, I mean files of uh, one GB or even 500, um, uh, 500 MB. You know, so please reserve this for tiny files, you know, uh, KBs of data, you know. But uh, if you're looking at files larger than say 300 MB, 500 GB, but definitely uh, one GB uh, going going onwards, then uh, this is not the best uh, option for you to use um, because there may be a scenario where you could have some uh, network interruption and it doesn't know how to, uh, you know, uh, continue where it left off and things like that. Also, this uploads serially. Um, if you use multi-part, the file can be divided into several parts and loaded, um, you know, um, in parallel. So that is actually the best way to do that. So I'm not going to do that. Let me drop that and then uh, quickly go back to my console here where I have my PowerShell and then I will execute this command. Okay, so let me just show you uh, the command that I'm going to execute. Uh, this is it. So here you can see that we are issuing an OCI, um, you know, put command. Um, the namespace is, as I'd mentioned before, you notice this. This is where the namespace where my bucket uh, actually resides. You can think of it as a tenancy as well. And then BN, we have the bucket name. Remember, we were talking about bucket uh, TDB. And then for the file, you have, uh, you know, the file where you've stored your file on your local machine. And under name, you can choose to rename the file different from what is on your machine. But this is not. Uh, this is actually optional. So if you do not intend to change the name, you can leave it as is, or you can have whatever name as you'd like to have the file on OCI. So that's it. And then all I do is to execute this. Okay. And uh, you will notice that a couple of things will happen here. So it's still trying to process that command. Um, so as that happens, I will show you a few things uh, on OCI. Uh, the console itself, just to see what is happening, because this command is actually going to divide this file into several parts. So as you can see, we have an upload ID here. We will verify this on the console, and then it's telling us that it has split this file into five parts, and uh, that is what is now actually being loaded. And in here, you will see a progress bar. It has changed from 0% uh, to 4%, and this is an estimate of uh, about how long it would take uh, for you to actually uh, load this file onto OCI. Now, having seen that, let's go back to our uh, console here. Um, let's see. We cannot see any file here. Uh, that's obvious because we've not yet uh, completed this process. We are still at 4%, okay? But at least we can see the multi-parts, uh, the split files, and uh, what is actually happening there, okay? You can see all that information here. So you just click on uncommitted multi-part uploads here, and then we toggle this switch and you can see the file. So at least we are seeing that the multi-part uploads has begun. Uh, and by the way, if you want to confirm that this is the correct one, uh, just look at uh, the upload ID. It was starting with 1A, 1E, ending 86. If we go back to our console here, you will see 1E uh, ending 86 which basically tells you we are in the correct space. Um, so this will uh, take some time, about four minutes or so. So please allow me to uh, pause the video. <laughs> 